All right, next item on our agenda is principal's reports. <coughs> Pam, <coughs> good evening. It was Hello. great um, sharing the parking lot with you last night. We were locked in the lot longer than we thought we would be. Um, really? I have, uh, most of us know. Um, the principal's report, I'm going to cover uh, a few things, giving you um, numbers new as of today. We're looking at our transfer ins and our transfer outs, just kind of see where we are relative to normal at this time of year, remembering that we're starting school a week earlier. Um, so I'll wait for everybody to get their copy. Um, our last, and then on the back, I'll talk about residency. Um, we're doing these processes simultaneously um, as new students are being enrolled. We're also going through the residency process with our existing students. So as you can see, um, comparable to um, the end uh, the, the end of the school year to this point in time, um, August 9th, at this point last year we had 52 students that had registered. Right now we have 42 <coughs> in our system, but we're taking new calls um, daily and we have appointments set up uh, all the rest of this week, on Monday and Tuesday of next week as well. Um, by the beginning of school last year, I wanted you to see um, around just after Labor Day, we, we tend to get an influx of transfer students sometimes coming because they think that um, maybe they're coming from the city of Chicago or from schools that start after Labor Day, so sometimes they're not aware that some of the suburban schools start earlier. So we had 116 transfer students um, really taking seats in our classes at the beginning of the school year next year. Uh, last year. So we're expecting that we probably stay the same. We're a little behind that right now just by 10 students. So I wanted you to see those numbers. Um, you can also see um, how the numbers fell with 45 freshmen last year, 26 sophomores, 30 juniors, and 15 seniors. Clearly the time people want to move to a new school is at the beginning of the freshman year. Um, transfer Students transferring out, I wanted to show you this information because as I presented to the board at the end of the school year, we met with our attorneys and we uh, refined our residency process and um, tightened things up just a little bit and we are seeing an impact on that in the numbers. Um, last year, uh, all the way through to the end of August, 20% of us, the students who exited that went and transferred to in-state schools uh, went to our neighboring schools. So those that didn't go out of state um, went to our na neighboring schools only 20%. As of just uh, um, August 9th, this Monday, we have had 50% of our exiting students that are not registering, that are withdrawing their students who were here last year are going to those neighboring schools. So we think because we've turned down a little bit, um, some of the students who might not, and it's not to say that's all the case with them, but that's an interesting statistic I thought you might want to see. So right now we've had a higher number of transfer out students to date that we have had in the past. Last year during the time um, from the end of the school year to the end of August, we had 24 total students transferring. That's what we have as of August 9th <coughs> at this point. So we're expecting more transfer outs as well. That's just showing you a little bit about what's happening with the in and out of our students. On the back page, some residency update. So far, um, after we finished our process that ran from 8 to 5 on um, Monday, yesterday, we have um, 1,240 families registered uh, in our data system with 1,400 plus students. And of those, 116 families have yet to go through the process, and that's 136 students who still need to go in through the process. That's better than we were at this point last year. Last year on this point, we had about 140 families who hadn't gone through the process. We did add a fifth day this year, which helped, I think, um, but we do have all these other families that still have to go through, so we've added Monday. Um, and so Monday, the hours, if, if you're watching this and you haven't gone through the residency <laughs> process, it's 9 to 11 and 1 to 2.30. Uh, we will process you up in room 201, the Lahotsky room. And so it's important that students go through that. They can't get their IDs and their student schedules to start classes on Wednesday the 17th unless they've gone through the process. We did send out a phone message, a reminder again to those families who haven't gone through. Again, we don't know if some of these families are going to end up to be transfer outs. We don't know the status, so I'll keep you updated on that. Um, I've spoken with the staff about a new process that I wanted to tell the board we're considering for next year, and that is um, something that I developed with a programmer, a computer programmer, when I was at my previous job, and that is a process that allows families to go online. We send them a 
family um, password to go on and they can select of all the time, uh, the days and the time frames, they can select their appointment so it will work with their schedule. It Amen. sends them, a, it, it prints out for them a, a verification of their appointment that they use as their entry ticket and it also sends them an email reminder the day before of their appointment is the following day and the time. And that is something that is very reasonable because I've already created the program with them. It just has to be modified with our student data put in, and put it into it and that um, would be $750. So we can talk a little bit about that. And that gives parents the flexibility rather than us forcing them on a day that doesn't work, they get to select um, from all of those slots a time that would work um, with will, them. Will it also them. allow them to be quicker than you want to um, speed I think what, hap what, what happens is we know how many we can process in about an hour. And so, but people are, as long as they come within the first 15 minutes of that time frame or get here in a timely manner, then yeah, we get them out in an hour. So that way it, it ebbs and flows a little bit smoother and, and people um, tend to select, they tend to adhere to the time that they get to select better than one that we impose on them. And so I think it's a process our families would appreciate and something we might want to consider doing. So I can talk to you more about that um, at a later time. But I just think that that will help um, smooth the process down uh, for us a little bit more and be more convenient for our families. Um, so that's what I wanted to let you know. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, Did you say that uh, this this process this year ferreted, at, ferreted out um, a greater number of questionable resident applicants? That's what we're believing is happening, yeah. Um, remember that one of the steps to the process now is that if you aren't the um, homeowner uh, or the lease holder, then the person, you can no longer just have an affidavit that you had you know, notarized or something. You need to bring that person in with you and they need to sign the paperwork in person with us to verify that you are living there. Um, we're also making sure that we don't have, if we've any, had any older temporary guardianships, that those are made permanent. Okay. So yeah, the whole process I think is, is um, it's very firm, it's very fair, and it's very consistent. And it did say that on the card so people are aware. And I think it is having a little bit of a, it's having an impact. Great. Thank you. So our potential student population, we have 1440 right now in the system. Mm -hmm. We have a potential for 136 to still come in. Yes, of those students yet to register. Okay, right. and that would be 1575 approximately? Uh, no, they're included in that. The 136 students are students that have schedules in our mm -hmm. system they've picked classes we sent them a mailing they have to come through and prove the residency have the student id taken and, okay. and go through that so, so the 1440 is our solid number except I, for I, on I, the front page we could get perhaps another hundred right okay exactly if our, if our patterns of the past remain true well, the last year Pardon? what was the right enrollment last year do you I think it ended up to be 1460 at the end. It fluctuated. It was 1441 at one point. It's 1460. So um, I, I, I think it was closer to under 1450. Uh, yeah, I think for the October housing report, the fall housing report, it was around 1450. Can you give us a little idea of how people reacted to the new forms and the new process and how your general feeling of how everything's going? Um, generally, the I, think, I mean, they understood. The, when we, I, I spoke to just a few families and, you know, explained that it's common at other schools, it's on the advice of the attorney, um, and we're being consistent and that it had board approval, and they said, okay, we understand. So I didn't have, um, you know, I mean. How about the other things, like the increased fees? And um, we've, we've not, I, I did ask the, the people in the business office as they were processing, they didn't have um, a lot of comments from, from people about the increase, um, maybe a comment here or there. Overwhelming, everyone was very, um, you know, gracious, and I think that they had been prepared for it. Uh, I think it really helped when the board gave permission for me to put the fees on the um, student uh, course verifications that I sent home, and then we were able to put the $190 fee that it was increasing. I think that helped. People did say that they appreciated getting that. There were some comments that they knew in advance what they were gonna have to pay. 
um, rather than just get their fee statement for the first time when they came to the residency process. So I think that um, helped families plan and, and be prepared. Well, how do you feel? You feel good about the new year? Just doesn't have to I all do. Be I, I wanted to talk a few <laughs> seconds about the first day of school. It's coming. Um, we are excited. We have our student association is, is eagerly planning um, the freshman orientation, which will be from 8 to 10 on the first day. And they've got some um, new events planned with that that I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag on. We're going to let them um, surprise the kids. So they're very excited. Um, we have a, a great number of students that are going to participate, a larger number that are going to participate going into the freshman homerooms and, and helping the kids get acclimated and taking them on tours and so forth. So that's exciting to see that grow and develop. And then um, all of our students will come at 10:15 and go to their homerooms and get their make sure to pick up their new schedules because they're, we are having some room changes as we're shifting with um, class counts, making sure they're in rooms that can accommodate them. And, um, catching any last minute changes in the schedule and so they'll get their um, their schedules and move on so we're excited to finally have some life in the building and have students again so are the schedules online now there are not they're not activated for students can see to see them because students only get their schedule after they have their ID taken so all their classes are in there and that's to make sure we have active IDs for everyone okay. so which is after the payment table that's right. There, well, a, we ran out of time, so we couldn't get the pictures taken, so okay. we didn't get our schedules. All right, this, but next year is going to be easier. Any other questions for Pam? I have a question. Sure. Yes. Do we have any evening hours? Uh, these hours are always during the working day for parents who work. No, there are evening hours um, okay. till seven. Two of the days had okay. uh, went to seven o'clock. So then that would be a. Uh, something that we can also see that you know, people can grab those appointments and if we do see those appointments filling up more we can always slide that's the nice thing when you're scheduling you're letting people people pick if those fill right away then you know and the morning ones aren't filling we could possibly slide our hours um, it makes it more visible people are would vote with their um, selection and we'd be able to see that in real time the, the program also allows them to, to move if they see another slot. And you can schedule your children together, you can schedule your children separately. It's very user friendly and it has pop up windows and it's almost, it's foolproof. Um, so that, that's, that's the advantage of having a program like that. You can start to see where people want the times. Any other questions? Two Bam, questions. Great job. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. The, yeah. uh, the uh, transferring students from last year. Uh, it's 110, 120, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, do we have data like where they came from? Yes, we do. And we keep data. Um, obviously, we have to get transcripts when the kids come in, so we have where they come from. We also have, I have a list, and that, that's how I, I had her go back three years to get tell me where they were transferring out to as well, so I could look for the pattern and the trend. But um, I, don't, I don't know if I have, I have, yeah, I do have for here, Actually, this doesn't tell me where they're coming from. This is the appointment schedule for all the new students coming in this year. Yeah, I'd be curious. Uh, the, your next report or whatever, you could compare last year and this year and in the year where where these people have come from. Okay. And how does our projection, if it's going to be fif fifteen, well, fourteen forty is total? What was our projection? It's about fourteen forty one. Um, I can I. Don't know if I have that with me, but pretty. So you don't have to make any changes in classes or anything based on what's happened. Um, based on our starting number, our projection was to stay pretty steady this year, with the. Yeah, I mean, with with the amount coming in, I think that we're if, if we have 148 transfer in, and then you don't know how many you're getting out. That's where you get the ebb and flow. So we shouldn't be too far off that. Do we have data of how many people choose private schools in each entering freshman class or eligible freshman class? Um, not always, because they don't always come here. As they, we have a number of students who test and take the Explore test here, but some of the, some of the students in the feeder school might not. They might go to a private school and take their entrance exam instead. So we wouldn't really know. And the feeder districts are. You know, they have the privacy issues with their data, so they don't. They can tell us how many students they have in the class, but we don't, and we can see how many we test and how far it's off. We usually test almost everyone in the in the feeders, but not all. So our numbers wouldn't be precise. 
Well, it would be nice if this you could track what's available and what how what our uh, parents are choosing. If they're choosing alternatives to the school because that's a way to tell people are voting with their their money. Mm -hmm. uh, if RB is doing the job, so uh, if you could investigate that in some fashion. With the limitations yeah, we could find out how many they have the eighth grade graduating class how many total they had and then we'd look at how many entered from that school because when students come we identify them in the student management the data system as far as, far as the feeder school they came from we could match that raw number with what they had for their graduating class and we could have a little bit we'd see we wouldn't know if they moved out of state or if they went to a private right. school but, but it'd be nice to get historical data too. Yeah. Uh, to what extent you could. Definitely, I know from our transfer outs if they went to a private school, if they went in state, out of state, I have where they went because we send their transcript. Um, that's a part of their exiting process. But students who don't come here, that might be a little bit more difficult to figure out. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I'll tell you one short story. My barber, who I go to for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Last year started doing reservations only that you made reservations. And I thought all the old people would go, you know, can't do it, get, you know, do something different. They love it so much and I love it so much because I don't have to wait anymore. I know I come in, I'm out. Mm -hmm. This is perfect for parents and also I like the shifting. If you need to shift up uh, times and make it later, that'll show us out. So that's very good. So thank you.